The older I get, the less I realize I know about how to navigate relationships, that we are all ultimately trapped in the islands of our own minds, from cradle to grave. Communication is hard. Spin. I've been trying to teach my dog to use buttons. Good girl. Touch. Good job. At first we avoided giving her a food button as some pets spam such buttons, but she wasn't learning the buttons, so we decided to give her a food button. It has not been a great success. She will press the button when prompted, but she treats the process as just another trick, not as a way of speaking her own needs. And why bother? She communicates her needs by staring, whining, pawing. These things work. From her point of view, what's the point of the buttons? It's hard enough communicating with other people, much less with animals, much less with aliens. The Numina series, including Axiom's End, Truth of the Divine, and finally, Apostles of Mercy, has a lot of themes. Chief among them, perhaps, communication, as well as culture, truth, power, security, apocalypse, fear, fear of the unknown, fear of being known, empathy, personhood, and government. Right up front, I have been impressed by Lindsay Ellis as an author. For me, this trilogy gets put up there amongst other jaw-dropping, big wow series, such as The Expanse by Corey, The Second Apocalypse by Backer, while being a completely different vibe from any of those books. Basically, this is a story of first contact with aliens and the struggle to reach beyond fear to a place of understanding and empathy. The author says, I wanted to write a Beauty and the Beast story where not only does the beast stay a beast, both physically and intrinsically, but only becomes more alien the more we learn about him. For me, the power in these stories comes from the relatability of the struggle to communicate with the other. I think that anyone who's married or been with the same partner for a long time will relate to parts of these books. I feel silly even just saying that. I mean, anybody who's ever struggled to communicate something will relate to parts of these books. I've been married for over eight years now. I've studied nonviolent communication and the, in a sense, alien languages of math, computer programming. I am someone who struggles every semester to teach these languages to students. Communication is frequently at the forefront of my mind and is more relevant than ever with the advent of large language models such as ChatGPT. How do we optimally communicate with AI to get the most out of it? And miscommunication, of course, has always been a great source of humor. On the St. Louis team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellas on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You know the fellow's me, names? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name on first base. Who? The fellow playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? Well, what are you asking me for? But when the future of humanity and two alien species are on the line, it's serious business. Now, none of this matters without good storytelling. I don't even really need capital letter big ideas. I'm basic. All I need are relatable, dynamic characters and a plot that makes me want to know what happens next. Apostles delivers, in my opinion, the best action thriller plotting and my favorite new characters of all three books. In book three, we're introduced to a new perspective character in Paris and a solid amount of CIA agent Sol Kaplan's perspective. And I enjoy these additions to Cora's perspective. Cora is, of course, the main character. There's more action in book three and less delving into mental health, anxiety, and depression, especially compared to book two, and I appreciate this change. I was surprised that book three adds a major new wrench in the presence of the Pequod superorganism's sister species codename Fisetterine. I was thinking, dude, you've got plenty of problems. We do not need this additional complication. And that's accurate. There was plenty for a book three without them. However, I liked this edition as well. It was fascinating to me, and there's so much driving book three forward. I think it's probably my favorite of the series. I do think book three is the least focused, but also the most thrilling in a thriller sense. And as has been established, I'm basic. I like a good thriller, and I'm impressed by any author that can straddle the scope of styles and concepts spanned by this series. Apostles of Mercy is a satisfying conclusion to a must-read sci-fi trilogy. But the ending. I want to talk a little about the ending. No specifics, but inevitably vague spoilers. 
I'm going to spoil what general issues and problems in the book are and are not resolved. I'm not going to tell you how they're resolved, but this is your warning. Stop now if you don't want to learn that stuff. I like endings that tie things up. I believe that the ability to write a satisfying ending is Brandon Sanderson's greatest strength as an author, whereas he's kind of standard with a lot of his other writing abilities. I've complained about popular authors and their seeming inability to tie up threads with their endings. The end of Apostles of Mercy ties up some things, but not others. It mainly focuses on settling personal conflicts, less so on tying up cataclysmic existential conflicts. I have mixed feelings about this choice. Upon reflection, I suppose that I want a happy and complete wrap-up because of the state of the modern world, in which America at least seems unable to decisively agree that a fascist resurgence is worse than neoliberalism. It is. And this immediate threat is taking an inordinate amount of energy and attention while global warming is beyond looming and solidly entering the actual damage phase. I want someone to tell me that it's all going to be okay. This ending doesn't do that, and I should have expected as much. The series is much too realistic to offer easy, trivial hope. I can't and don't hate the ending. There is some hope there, and I do appreciate that. I just find myself wanting the impossible. I find myself wanting a nice, happy, convincing, guilt-free escape. Which is ironic because that's where book two ends, with the heroes planning to run from all their problems. I've seen some readers online suggest with raised eyebrows that maybe this three book series is now going to be a five book series. I don't necessarily want that. I do like things that conclude, even if they do leave a few loose ends to the imagination. And Apostles of Mercy does conclude. It does have an ending. Whether or not you think it's satisfying is, of course, going to be uh, different for every single reader. I think that it is a worthy conclusion to a powerful trilogy.